A long time ago, I reviewed one of the legendary bombs of video game history, Superman 64, and unlike most of the ninnies who claim to review the game but actually give up halfway through the first level, I actually rode the bull all the way to the end. To make a long, long story short, Superman 64 is even worse than the legends say, and is truly worthy of the title of being one of, if not the worst games of all time. But apparently the story doesn't end there. See, Superman 64 was made by a company called Titus Software, and you're not going to believe this. In fact, I still don't believe it. I'm pretty sure this is some elaborate prank being pulled on me by my viewers, but... <laughs> they made another one! Yeah, two years before Superman 64 was cursed upon the planet, Titus made another Superman game on the Game Boy. So this I've got to see, but you never know. Never judge a book by its cover. Or its author, unless that author is Stephanie Meyer. Maybe this game will be decent. Well, that delusion was great while it lasted. Water. I get uber thirsty when I'm about to yell and scream. I don't know if this is common knowledge, but did you know that if you're playing a classic black and white Game Boy game on a Game Boy Color or Advance, you can press the arrows and buttons on the startup screen to change what colors the game displays in? There! Now everything is brown! The color of SHIT! Oh god, that's gaudy! Pressing right and B inverts the colors, which is really trippy. I guess this game takes place in the Phantom Zone. Alright, enough screwing around. Let's start the game. As soon as you turn the game on, you see a pencil drawing of Superman and the game starts. There's no menu, no options, no password system, the game just starts. You start walking down a street fighting flashers and trying to collect four keys. Why do you need keys when you're Superman and even if you needed to open a door you could just punch it and reduce the door to particulates? I don't know and there's no poorly written prequel comic to explain it. The enemies, who look suspiciously like the Dark Shadows from the Nintendo 64 game, it's almost like they recycled the enemies they already had, all have guns and open fire as soon as you're in their line of sight, and bullets move way too fast for you to dodge. Luckily, being Superman, you can punch the bullets and deflect them back into the enemies, because apparently now Superman is willing to kill people with his gun fists. But since the enemies shoot you the instant they see you and the bullets move so fast, you'll never be able to react and punch the bullets by instinct, so you start tediously nudging your way through the level so you can mash the punch button as soon as an enemy gets into view. You can, of course, cut out the middleman and kill enemies by punching them, but you take damage by touching enemies whether they attack you or not, and the game's hit detection is very biased against you, so you need to punch enemies without actually touching them, somehow. Let me explain it this way. The game treats Superman as a block that encases you and a few square pixels outside of you, so enemies can damage you by touching the blank space immediately around you, and you have no ranged attacks. The only way to punch an enemy is to get close enough so that they touch your block, so it comes down to luck whether you can hit someone without getting hit unless you resort to bullet punching. You also need to kill as many enemies as you can because three of the four keys in this level are carried by bad guys. Holding the A button lets you fly, but you won't fly in the first level because apparently the people in this part of town hate Superman so much that they've taken to strapping grenades to the sides of their buildings. It's easy to avoid them, or at least it would be if the flight mechanics weren't so screwed up. When you start holding A, Superman doesn't take off flying. He starts slow and then lurches upward as he picks up speed. Same thing with dropping after you let go of the A button. So if you want to do any actual maneuvering, you have to fidget with the A button having Superman rise slowly, then shoot upwards. You try to descend a little bit and after a second he drops like a stone, the momentum just makes flying a pain in the ass. The flying physics are very similar to those in Balloon Fighter or Jetpack, except jetpacks have to obey the laws of physics. Superman doesn't. Flying doesn't need to be this hard. The other reason flying is a bad idea in level 1 is that enemies like to sit in windows and have the same accuracy as their land-based buddies, and if you try and fly up to the windows and attack them, A, good luck flying to them with any accuracy, and B, you will either get shot or take damage from touching the bad guy before you kill them. So do what I do and just ignore them. It makes this level like two minutes long. Oh, so that's what the keys are for, to make a launch pad appear at the end of the street. Because Superman can't take off flying from any other point on this street. Now you're probably wondering how you use Superman's other powers, like heat vision or super breath. It's quite simple. You don't. As you watch over the city, the invaders begin their attack. You have two keys to find. Yes, invaders are apparently attacking the city from the sky, and yet Superman is more concerned with finding keys instead of stopping the invasion. Level 2 doesn't have any ground, you have to stay flying throughout the entire level. If you dip below the bottom of the screen, you die, with the game saying you have quit the fight as an excuse. I didn't quit, I just flew a little low because the controls suck ass! 
Luckily, the two keys you need are in plain sight at the end of the level, so you don't need to kill any of the enemies. This is fortunate, because between the enemy's guns, the bogus hit detection, and the fact that you drop like a rock if you take damage, trying to actually fight the enemies is pretty much suicide. Behold, the symbol of truth, justice, and the American way, as he completely ignores the bad guys that are invading his city. But even if you don't fight the enemies, this level will drain at least one or two of your lives because of how broken it is and how crappy the controls are. Fuck. 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 Fuck! I will say one positive thing for this game. For the classic Game Boy, this game has pretty decent graphics. The skyline in the background looks great, and the animations on Superman when he walks and punches on the ground are pretty fluid though I'm not entirely sure why Superman's sprite when he's standing still is standing on one leg. The only bad thing about the graphics is that when you pause the game, the entire screen starts flashing instead of putting a text box saying pause in the middle of the screen. It's a good thing the screen is small, because this could give a guy a seizure. There's not much to say about the sound, though. There are barely any sound effects in the game, and the music is pretty bland. I usually play my Game Boy with the sound muted anyway, and with this game you're not missing much by doing that. What's weird is that there is a song in the game that sounds like a variation of the Superman theme, but it only plays when you die! Level 3, you're in LexCorp, and you have to find two keys and then fight the LexoScale 5000. The level is full of these electrical barriers and more flashers that shoot you the instant you come into sight. I guess now is as good a time as any to mention that if you die, you get sent back to the start of the level, and you don't get to keep any keys you've collected. Because this is the first level where it becomes a massive pain in the ass, since there are flashers behind every corner. You get six continues, lose all of them and you get a game over, and then you either shut the game off or you start back at level one. Not that it takes long to get back to this point, the first two levels combined take like five to seven minutes to complete. You don't get health back in between levels, and the only health power-ups you can find are these jewels, which are super rare and they only recover about half the damage you take from a single hit. I still don't understand why jewels restore your health. I'm playing as Superman, not Rarity. Did the programmers think that the shield in the Superman logo is actually a diamond? Oh my god, the programmers thought the shield in the Superman logo was actually a diamond. That's exactly what happened. There actually is a glitch that you can try to exploit to get your health back. If you take an exactly correct amount of damage, your health bar will be empty, but you won't die until you take one more hit. If you finish a level with an empty health bar, you'll start the next level with full health. But this glitch requires so much luck to pull off that it's really not worth actively trying to use. Because the enemies are so accurate and you're given so little time to react to them, it's very easy to die if you're not careful. But in all honesty, most of the levels aren't that hard. Once you've played the levels a few times and you've learned all the game's little tricks, it's pretty easy to get through the levels for the most part. You figure out where the enemies are and where the keys are hidden, you figure out how to take down enemies without taking damage, and you figure out when it's best to just ignore enemies and pass them by. It's all a matter of patience. The game has cheap tricks that kill you in lieu of actual challenge or difficulty. Case in point, the Lexo Scale, the boss of stage 3 is easy as crap to beat, mostly because this is the only time when the hit detection isn't biased against you. Level 4 takes place underwater, because apparently Superman finds a secret passage at LexCorp that leads underwater. The graphics now do this tripping balls ripple effect that's more annoying than cool, and you have to swim around looking for more damn keys and fighting sharks that take two punches to kill. Why was that shark holding the key? Did he eat the guy who was carrying the key? Or has Lex Luthor been training sharks to carry keys for him? And if so, why in God's name would he do that? The game's controls have also somehow gotten worse since it takes much longer for you to accelerate upwards when you hold A than normal. I never thought I'd say this, but I wish I was playing as Aquaman. At least I'd be able to use telepathy to tell these sharks to piss off! Level 5 is a recycled copy of Level 2, so now I can completely ignore all of these enemies again. But like Level 2, this stage is so broken, you're probably going to lose another life here. Level 6 takes place aboard the Preserver's ship, even though the game doesn't name him. This level is built like a maze, and even if you memorize where the keys are, like I did, and take the shortest route through the level, you'll almost always die before you get to the end. The problem is that the level is built out of hallways that give you no room to maneuver. You have to fight the enemies, and the hit detection in this level is somehow even worse worse than the other levels, so it's nearly impossible to kill these aliens without getting hit. These enemies don't have guns and don't shoot. You can't just punch their bullets back at them. You have to punch them, you have to kill them, and if you try to punch them, you'll get murdered. This level is completely broken! Look at this, seriously look at this. This alien just landed a hit and killed me, but you can clearly see that he's not touching me! You have no choice but to kill these enemies by punching them, but because they can hit you without actually hitting you, getting close enough to punch them means 
seconds getting close enough for them to hit you first. It's total bullshit! Level 7 is a recycled clone of level 1, only with enemies that look like Lobo on flying bikes and take 4 goddamn hits to kill a piece. The only way to kill these assholes is to fly up close to them and bullet punch them, which is hard to do since the controls are so lousy. On top of that, again, you need to kill all of the enemies because they're holding most of the keys. Shit! And level 8 is a recycled clone of level 3, the LexCorp level. The layout is different and the electrical gates are faster, but it's the same damn stage. And level 9 is a recycled level 4, the underwater level. Are you freaking kidding me? Half the levels are just reused and slightly rearranged versions of other levels? How lazy can you get? And I gave up on this game having an actual story a long time ago, but why do you go from fighting invaders to breaking into LexCorp to swimming underwater for no real reason, then fighting the Preserver, then fighting more invaders, then breaking into LexCorp and going underwater again. It's like these levels were arranged at random. The game doesn't even come up with reasons why you're going through the underwater levels. It just says dive into the unknown and doesn't even try to explain what you're doing. Also, up to level 9, and I've only fought one boss in level 3. I'm guessing there's only two in the entire game, one for the last level. I think there are 10 levels in the game, but I don't know for sure. I haven't beaten the game because I've only beaten level 6 twice, and once was with no lives left and low health, so I died immediately. The level is so long, and the hit detection so bogus, that beating the level pretty much boils down to luck. And why should I try to beat this game? There's no story awaiting resolution. If I keep going, I'm just going to keep playing the exact same horrible levels I've already played, just getting worse and worse each time. If I get to the end, I'm probably just going to see another pencil drawing of Superman, nothing that's worth going through all the effort to try and see it, and the game sure as hell isn't fun enough for me to keep going just because I want to, there's absolutely no reason to play the game. Beating Superman 64 was at least an accomplishment. There was a curiosity about what the next level was like and what horrors were waiting around the next corner. This game is just crap. It's made of failure and not even interesting failure. Superman 64 was a train wreck. It was horrible, but it was fascinating. This is just a car breaking down. It's not interesting, it's just dull. If you don't mind me going on a little tangent, there's one last final thing I'd like to address about Superman 64. The head of Titus has said repeatedly that Superman 64 was not their fault. He said that Superman 64 was horrible because the Nintendo 64 wasn't capable of what they wanted to do, and because Warner Brothers and DC kept meddling with the game until it got screwed into oblivion. I will always call bullshit on that excuse. The Nintendo 64 wasn't as powerful as they thought. That explains the draw distance. Warner Brothers kept meddling. That explains the glitches because they probably had to rush the game, and that explains the dumb story because they didn't want Superman punching real people. Neither of those things explain the rings. They don't explain why none of the levels make any sense. They don't explain why the controls are broken. They don't explain the sucky-ass combat. They don't explain why completing every single objective in that game is like pulling teeth. Titus, if anybody from your company is watching this, I want you to know why Superman 64 sucked. I've got your answer. It's because the game staff was nothing but five programmers and a few managers to make sure the thing got done in time. You didn't have any lead designer to rein in the programmers or give them direction, and you sure as hell didn't QA test, or if you did, you didn't credit the testers or fix any of the complaints. Superman 64 was horrible because you sucked at your job, and Exhibit A for that argument is sitting in my hands right now. This game is just awful. There's nothing fun about it. All the levels are short. Your objective in each level is find a few keys. The combat isn't fun because the hit detection is so abysmal. It's basically luck if you can actually kill enemies. The controls are crap. There's nothing enjoyable at all about this game. About the only nice thing I can say about this game is that it was not as horrible an experience as the Nintendo 64 game. And believe me, that's not saying very much. Now, I would do a mic drop, but the microphone is built into my computer, and I really don't want to drop my computer, so... Yeah. This game sucks. Don't touch it. Well, that delusion was great while it lasted. You want some two boy? Come get the water. Come get the water. Come get the water. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. <laughs>